When I started painting Warhammer, I spent money on all kinds of different tools that I'd never end up using. So, to save you from that trouble, I'm going to show you exactly what I'd buy if I started painting miniatures and only had $100 to spend. And guys, stick around to the end because you do not want to miss this video if you're a beginner painter. We'll even show you some alternative secret tips. Let's do this. We are not barbarians. <laughs> First, one thing, because $100 in a hobby that has no limit is not going to get you everything. Especially if you want to build an entire army. Just one Mega Guardian will set you back $210. And to complete most Warhammer armies, you have to spend between three and $800. Luckily, you can find a lot of Warhammer second hand. There's a ton of good Facebook group for Warhammer buy sell, and there's gaming groups in almost every city in the world. And through those different kinds of forums, I've been able to find five full armies between $50 and $150. When we talk about starting with miniature painting, we do not talk about buying an entire army, but everything you need to build, paint, and prepare that army to make it ready for playing. Or maybe you're just getting into it to become a better painter. So, for the sake of this video, we will assume that you already have a miniature purchase. And if not, maybe ask your friends. Please, sir, I want some more. Number one. To build your miniatures, you need tools. So the first purchase, Hobby Tools Kit for $12. This has everything you need and then some. Sanding sticks, clippers, hobby knife, tweezers, just to mention a few things. It might not be the best tools, but if you don't have any at home, it will definitely be way enough for you to get started. Number two, you also need something to glue your miniatures together. So once you've cut them from the spruce and sanded away any flashing, we need super glue. There are more brands of super glue than I have underwear in my drawers. And the best ones we've found that are at a reasonable price are these ones from Bealtema, it's sort of a dollar store, hardware store. 50 milliliter cyanoacrylate super glue and comes with an activator. And I cannot tell you how nice these are. So with the toolkit and the super glue, we are almost up 20% of our total budget, spending a total of $17. But it gets better from here. Okay, we prepped our miniatures, cutting them from the sprue, gluing them together, and now we need to paint them. But before we do, we're gonna use a spray can primer. So this will be our third purchase. My personal favorite spray can is the Vallejo Hobby Spray Paints, but there are cheaper alternatives. From my understanding, in the US you can find rust paints, and they are apparently completely fine for spraying your minis. And the best thing with these, if you're painting an army where 90% of the mini is painted in the same color. Maybe ultramarines, then an ultramarine blue is a perfect base color, or dark green if you're painting dark angels. It is definitely a well worth investment once you're getting started. $32 spent, it's gonna be tough to stay under 100, but we're gonna do it and we're gonna get you an amazing starting kit. Okay, what else do we need? Well, we need a mug to keep our water and to rinse our paints and brushes. And if you spend money on a mug when you're getting started in this hobby, instead of one of those ugly coffee mugs that you have in your kitchen, you should not be trusted with money ever again. Do not spend your beginning money on a cup. But let's instead talk about those brushes. Because here is my take. You are going to want to buy a couple of different brushes. But we can do it economically and we can do it smart. You want to get yourself a cheap set of brushes that you can use for 80% of your painting, adding all the base coats, painting the bases, painting textures, all of that kind of jazz. And the cheapest ones I found cost $2 for a set of 10 on Wish. And yes, I know these websites are iffy and uh, they might be produced with morally ambiguous procedures, but so are the dollar store brushes in your local dollar store. So you gotta pick your poison here. But for those other 20%, you want a fine tipped Kolinsky Sable paintbrush, a size zero or one, depending on which brand you buy. And if you're on a budget like we are, don't go buying the Squidmar paint set with six Kolinsky brushes the first thing you do, because you do not need six brushes, you need one one and I'd get a slightly cheaper one. Look at Rosemary & Co for $10 or maybe Rubloff. Both these brands you can find a brush for under $10 which is a perfect beginner Kolinsky paintbrush. So this is the brush that you bring out after you've done your base coat and your washes and you want to paint those final details and all of the nice fine edges of your minis. We're already up $44 and you haven't even talked about wet palettes yet. And you're gonna need a wet palette because say it after me we 
are not barbarians. Those are super expensive, Emil, and you always recommend the red dress games wet palette. I know I do, but when we're getting started, you do not want to spend $55 on a wet palette. We've already talked about how irresponsible you are if you spend money on the water cup when you start painting, and the wet palette falls under the same category. You have baking paper at home. This is the one that's without wax. It's regular freaking baking paper. <laughs> and if you're a Swede or just a normal sane person, you should have these Swedish dish rugs at home. These are the perfect sponge to suck up enough water to keep your paint moist for the entire painting session. <laughs> and if you don't have a Tupperware or like an old plastic container, you know what, then there is no solution to help you with this. But this is a perfect base to create your own homemade wet palette. Because a wet palette is really game changer when you're getting started and making one at home, cutting out the piece, putting it in the lid and then when you're done for the day you can close it up wow. like this and you've got a perfect usable wet palette. You can find a pair of 10 of these on Amazon for $7 and you spend a dollar and you have a wet palette. Putting us at a whopping $45, oh my god, almost halfway, but we still don't have any paints. And we still don't even have anything to make our epic bases. That is true, but let's start with the paints because when picking out paints there's a billion different alternatives. And there's a billion different opinions, but everyone except me is wrong. It's just the way it is. The old army painter paint line is not great. Honestly, it's terrible. But they are reworking it and soon they'll have a new one that I hope is gonna be a lot better. Another brand that makes terrible paints is Green Stuff World. I can't stand them. They are terrible. It's like painting with gel. And war paints. They're using something called the gel medium, which is quite a lot more difficult to control for a beginner. All of these paint brands require you to add multiple layers to get a good coverage, and they are really difficult to work with as a beginner. Instead, from our testing, for a beginner, the best paints are probably Citadel by Yehu Model Color or AK Interactive third generation acrylics. But I'm not gonna tell you exactly which paints to buy because that is going to be very depending on which army you're painting. If you're painting ultramarines, obviously you're going to need a bunch of blues and maybe some leather colors and golds. If you on the other hand are painting a sylvanet, maybe you require a lot of dark greens. The only two colors that I always recommend you to have in your arsenal is either a matte black, personally I prefer the Vallejo one, and a white or an ivory to give you those brightest highlights. Here in Sweden these pots cost around $3.20. That would bring our total up to $32 worth of paints and that's some really nice paints. Emil, our total is now a whopping $77. Yes, that means we have $23 left to spend. The main thing we need now to make our miniatures look amazing is basing materials. But before we talk about amazing basic materials, let me mention this week's sponsor, Squarespace. Because Squarespace is an amazing platform if you want to build your own website. Whether it is for your wedding photography service or your own products, or maybe you're selling a book online, Squarespace has you covered with their amazing looking award-winning templates. You don't need any previous knowledge of how to program and design a website. Squarespace will follow you, hold your hand as you design the website. And pretty much everything is drag and drop. A great example for this is our website where we, as we've mentioned, put up all of the stuff that we use in videos by literally just dragging and dropping stuff to our website. We also have our web store hosted by Squarespace and everything runs super smooth. Right now it's completely free to try out Squarespace. All you gotta do is follow the link down below. And when you're ready to launch that website that you've designed yourself, you can use the code SQUIDMAR to get 10% off your entire purchase of a website or a domain. And you'll be up and running with the website in no time. Okay, let's go. And here you can spend however much money you want, but we can also be really, really big brain smart and save a ton of money by using things we have at home. If you are a drunk and an alcoholic, you can use wine corks for rocks, but if you're more like a normal person, you can use cork coasters to build rocks on your bases. Don't steal too many or your significant other is going to get pissed. Instead of buying sand for $10, you can go out and grab a handful at the beach or maybe at the playground and just cook it in the oven. You can also find roots from fallen trees to create tiny trees on your bases or seeds from birch trees to create fallen leaves. This is a pack of coconut fiber that I had at home 
This is something that you buy at Ikea to use in your plants. This is perfect to create like a forest ground base. And if you don't have this, you can use old tea packages and make sure that they are dry and you can use that as forest scatter on your basing. And I've shown you guys many times before how you can get free coffee stirrers at coffee shops. Are you a goddamn thief now, Emmy? Yes, I am. And these are perfect to create maybe wooden beams, small bridges or beach stuff, whatever they're called. Heter den brygga. The possibilities of making bases on a budget are endless, but there are two things that I tend to buy whenever I'm building a new army. Number one. <laughs> The first one is to get a nice ground pigment. As an example, if you're making a desert base, you've added the sand, you put some paint in there, but it doesn't quite look like a desert. Pigments have the perfect size to make your bases look more realistic. So buying like a yellow ochre pigment for your desert bases, or if you're doing a forest base, then maybe like a dark brown one for all the mud parts. Perfect to get some more life into your minis. These ones cost $5 a pop. And the other basing thing that I tend to recommend is grass tufts, because these make your bases come alive. If you're doing a desert base, then maybe buy some dried grass tuft that looks yellow, that matches with the sand you're gonna have on your base. Or if you're doing a forest one, maybe you splurge and buy two different color grass tufts, maybe one with flowers, and then you have a nice variation on your bases. There's a ton of different brands. Personally, I really love Gamers Grass. These cost about $8 for a pack, and that will last you hopefully for the entire army or at least to get started. If you bought one of these pigments and a set of grass tufts, we are now up to $90. Which means that you've even got money to spare. And these $10 are gonna come in hand because as I've said, if you're making a forest base, maybe you want to spend an extra $8 on more grass tufts. If you don't have PVA glue to glue your sand on your base, then maybe you go to a hardware store and buy a set of PVA glue. And also I've promised this last super recommendation. Whenever you are painting an army, there is nothing that is going to help you as much as getting an airbrush. Really Emil, an airbrush? Last time I checked, the Squidmore Evolution airbrush is like $250. <laughs> yes it is, but you're just getting started so you need to be smart with your money. You can find an airbrush that works perfectly okay. It is not going to be a master airbrush, but it's going to save you so much time. You can find an airbrush on Wish for $12. These are perfectly okay. They're not going to let you paint all the finest details and make you a master painter, but it is perfectly fine for airbrushing base coats or the first layer of highlight with the Zenithal spray. And a crappy compressor on the internet you can find for about $20. Just make sure that you have the right connection on the hose and you're good to go. A shit airbrush and compressor is still better than no airbrush and compressor and together with the hose, compressor and airbrush you've spent about $40. So obviously if you buy this you're going to go over the $100 budget but I think it's worth mentioning that if you can paint an army in 40 hours instead of half an army in 250 hours, well you decide how much money is your time worth. And because I'm a true gentleman, I'm going to link all of the stuff that I talk about in this video to Amazon links down below. The prices may vary depending on which country you're in, but we've got it all listed down below and on our website squidmar.com if you ever wonder about the tools we use in videos. And with that said, thanks so much everyone for watching this video. Thanks to this week's sponsor for sponsoring this video, Squarespace, you are legendary. Thanks all the patrons again. Bye bye.